Hello friends, I hope you're doing well today. It's time for the November update about Japan travel. It's November 6th and it's still actually very warm this year. It's supposed to be a little more cooler this time of the year, but I still can go out with short sleeve when I take my dog to the walk. And recently I went to a place called Nagano, which is the inland of Japan's main island. There's a place called Kamikochi and Hakuba, so I'll make the video about that later. So some trees already leaves are dropped, but I still saw some green leaves. So it looks like the autumn is coming a little bit late this year. I see the forecast that the winter will be a little warm this year and less snow. Today I'd like to talk about mainly two topics. One is, it's been about one year since the border has opened to the individual tourists. So I'd like to go over the major procedures of now, preparing for the trip to Japan, entering Japan, and traveling in Japan, based on the update that I've been talking about the past one year. Some of the changes have already finished, and some of the update is new. So I'd like to go over what you need to know right now, and you don't have to know so you don't have to look back old videos. And the second is, it's getting the winter, and I get several questions, especially about the snow, where you can see snow and when you can see snow. So I'd like to go over the winter travel tips in Japan as a second topic. So let's start from the first things, the basic requirements and what to know entering Japan and traveling in Japan. So last year, October 11th, the border has reopened to individual tourists. And this April 29th, the, all the requirement for vaccine and negative certificate has lifted. So I still get the question, do you still need any certificates to enter Japan? But you don't need them anymore. You need a passport or a visa to enter Japan, just like before the closure of the borders. And in case you are not sure about the visa in your country, you might want to check with your local travel agency or local Japanese embassy's website. Once you have the valid passport or visa, you can just purchase airplane tickets or get the hotels, just like traveling other countries or anywhere. One thing to know before you enter Japan is filling the Visit Japan web. This Visit Japan web's original purpose was to upload the negative certificate and the vaccination certificate. So you might think you don't need it anymore, but if you fill the form online through the Visit Japan web in advance, you can go through the airport earlier than the travelers who hasn't filled. That's what I've been hearing on the comment sections and also from someone I met. So it's very convenient if you fill the Visit Japan web before you enter Japan. And once you enter Japan, or if you have been here, or if you have seen a little bit older information, you might have seen that you can purchase the IC card to get on the train, like this. It's called Suica and Pasmo. But these are not on sale anymore because of the shortage of the IC chips. They don't sell these anymore in Tokyo region. So in case they sell something like this for international travelers, it only lasts for one month and you cannot get the refund of the money inside. But on the other hand, there's no deposit, unlike these cards. So these are mostly available at the airport, train station, and not in the city. There are several travel agencies they are selling in the city too, but it might be definitely easier to get at the airport. And, and also, JL is now recommending to get the Apple Pay. If you have Apple Pay, you can just install Suica to your iPhone and just go through the gate with iPhone. If you have iPhone, it's definitely worse. Even when you're in Japan, you can just charge from your credit card in your country with just one tap. In case you travel from Tokyo to Kyoto by Shinkansen, wagon service, a trolley service that sells the food on train has finished from this month, November 1st. So make sure you purchase lots of food or drinks before you get to the platform or at the platform. Now they sell the ice cream or coffee at the platform of Tokyo Station. So it's a little difficult because if you purchase ice cream, obviously you have to eat right away before you eat food on the train. So I don't know how it works, but uh, make sure you have enough food and train because it gives you lots of ease of mind. If you are using green car, no worry about it because you can order the ice cream or coffee on the train through your smartphone. So there's a QR code in your seat of the green car, so you can just read that with your smartphone and you can go to the order screens. 
And next is let's go over to the winter topic. And winter is coming soon and the major question I get often is where you can see snow. If you are from North America or Europe, you might wonder why you have to see snow in Japan or you don't want to see snow. <laughs> but uh, it's an important topic for travelers from the South Hemisphere or tropical country. So let me talk about the climate system of Japan in winter. The trade wind is coming from the west side and it goes through the sea of Japan which has a warm current and a lot of steam comes through the cloud and it forms a snow cloud. The main island of Japan has a tall mountain penetrating from north to the west and it hits Japan's mountain, gives a lot of snow to that mountain area. That's why Japan is one of the heaviest snowing country in the world. But on the other hand, the east side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain only gets the dried air. So Tokyo usually don't get any snow, always sunny and very cold and windy. Near Tokyo, let's see where you can see snow. The first one is Gara Yuzawa, and second one is Karu Yuzawa, and third one is near Mount Fuji. And Gara Yuzawa is a Shinkansen station of JR East, and you can go there in about 1 hour and 10 minutes. The station itself is a ski station, and you can rent boots, ski wear, there is a direct gondola to the ski resort. So you just arrive at the Shinkansen station, you can change there, you can even take hot springs, and you can go to the ski resort. It's very convenient from Tokyo, so it's been a very popular destination for travelers from other countries. The second one will be the Karuizawa. Karuizawa is also a Shinkansen station. And the great thing about Karuizawa is in case some of your group or family doesn't want to do ski or are not so interested in snowing, there is also outlet malls and shopping area and it's kind of nice resort town. So you can have a similar different ways to enjoy the town. And the third one is near Mount Fuji. This is recommended in case you want to see Mount Fuji but you don't have much time to go other places. There's also a snow park called Ieti which opens always one of the earliest in Japan. They also use kind of artificial snow machine and you can enjoy the snow. And all of these places you can use JR Tokyo Wide Pass. It's 15,000 yen, but for example, if you go to Karuizawa land trip, it's 12,000 yen already just for that one day. So it does work and it's easy to get most of it. In case you go to other ski areas, there are tons of other places you can go either the other side of the mountain, like Hokuriku, Niigata, or Tohoku areas, or Hokkaido's. And next topic is when you can see snow. Snow season is usually end of December to February. But to be precise, you can see snow sometimes from end of November to even to April sometimes. But uh, the season you can see snow for sure is end of December to January and mid February. So I checked the date the major ski resort opened this year. The Furano ski resort near Asahikawa opened November 25th this year and last until May 6th as of current schedule. Niseko and Shigakogen opened by December 2nd and continue until May 6th. And looks like all the major ski resort in main island of Japan is scheduling to open December 16th this year. Zao Onsen ski resort most of the Hakuba ski resort and Gala Yuzawa. So from here I'd like to go over the news that I see recently related to Japan travel topics. And news is about two things. It's all about two things recently. Bears and over tourism. Bear has been a big news in Japan. In Japan, across the country there is a bears, except Shikoku and Kyushu. In Kyushu, it's extinguished already. All other parts, there are bears, even in Tokyo. In autumn is the season, bears try to get lots of food before they go to bed. But it seems they have a problem finding food this year and they come down to where human lives. So probably as it's getting winter, we don't see this kind of news anymore. It's something good to be aware of. And second one is over tourism. It's kind of sad because finally the border has opened and it's been only one year and already over tourism. 
And this over tourism is also happening even in the really countryside. Common thing is it's introduced by the major influencers or travel influencers. Good example is Morioka is a town in the Iwate prefecture and they were introduced in New York Times. So suddenly many people rushed there and you see lots and lots of foreign people there, which was very rare before the closure of the border and before the New York Times introduced about it. Looks like people in Morioka is mostly welcoming it. And for Japanese people, I think most people haven't been to Morioka and uh, unless they go for work. Like, it's more for the place kind of where just people live. And I don't have an image of people going to Morioka. And if someone goes to Morioka, people ask you, like, why? Why, why you went to Morioka? What's there? Like, I know how attractive the each local area and I'd love to visit different parts of Japan but uh, it shows how influential the media are. Also recently, web magazine introduced uh, Tomigaya in Tokyo as the uh, 50 coolest spots of the world and number 10 was Tomigaya near Shibuya station. So I don't live far from there so let me take you there and please let me know how you think about it. So it is a cool place for sure for Tokyo people, but it's a matter of the, is it a cool place for visitors from other countries too. So let's see. This is a big street of Yamate Street, and under there is the Yogi Hachiman Station of Odakyu Line, the third stop from Shinjuku. And Tomigaya is the area kind of spreading between Shibuya Station and this Yogi Hachiman Station. Streets towards Shibuya. This is a Tomigaya crossing, and some bicycle parked here, flowers, and little back street we can see. This street takes you to the Yogi Uehara station, and you see the Turkish.
an area called Okushin, which means deeper side of the ship. Nobody, but today there are lots of people. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Have a great trip to Japan. Have a great week until the next video. Bye bye. And sorry, the camera is a bit lower today because I'm trying to show Kenny. Yeah, because usually he's not here, but he's here today. So let me film him. <laughs>